Hey everybody, this is Kimberly from Starfish Design Embroidery. Um, I'm going to do an update to my name stamp tab video. It's actually my most viewed video. I think I've had like 9,000 views on it. Um, I was very new to doing embroidery when that video came out. And I've learned some new items that are a little bit more beneficial to creating a nicer stamp tab. Um, I'm still going to use... Um, and Brilliance Essentials and Enthusiast, but I'm going to fine tune the file to make it s stitch out better. So I just want to um, let you know I have in Brilliance Essentials, Enthusiast, and all the way up to Stitch Artist 3. So my icons up here may look a little bit different than yours. So I've started with a new file. I have my 4x4 four four or 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter hoop in the window because I try to make sure all my files are in that format. Now there's been a lot of updates to Embroyant Stitch Artist since I did the first video and I'll try and put a card to that video um, here on the new video if you want to go back and check that out if you haven't seen it. You never know, I might have said something there that is important that I'm not going to say here. So I'm going to do the same thing um, and start um, the name. So generally what I do is I come up here and you click on this to look at the fonts that you have installed on your computer. I do have um, the font engines from, not the font engine, but I have a couple extra fonts from um, Embrilliance. So let's see, what do we want to use here? And I have a lot of fonts installed Um from other um, vendors. I'm not a big font person. I don't make a lot of fonts. They're very time consuming and it's a lot of work to get them nice. So I generally only do a font if I need it for a snap tab that I'm making. And those of you who have been following me know that I mostly am making other in the hoop projects now. So I don't do a lot of snap tabs. Okay, so we're going to make this font, this, um, Snap tab. One thing when you pull in a, a BX font, this is what everything that shows up here are BX fonts you have installed on your computer or the built in embroidery. You'll notice all the spacing in between here. See how it's looping up? You don't have to leave it like this. You can go ahead and click on this and it'll take you into um, the stitch edit mode normally. I don't know why it's not right now. Let me click off and then click back. Oh, I think you have to click the little box. Sorry, forgot that part. So you got to click one of these little boxes. And now you can go ahead and hold this. And now you can manipulate these characters. Now, I should have said first, I unselected and then reselected by doing a Command A or Control A. I like to put it on a line first just to make sure that it's even. So when I'm moving it around. So go ahead and click on that little box again, and now you'll see you have the arrows here This um, to allow you to rotate it. You can do all kinds of manipulation when you're in this format. Um, but I'm just going to move my letters closer together so they look like they're actually supposed to be next to each other. Maybe if my um, system will respond with me here. Ooh! I don't know why I went that far over. Sorry. It's Clacking. Okay, so we're going to put the S a little closer. And then I'm going to move the I a little closer. And then the A, I'm going to make that also overlap that little up right. And there we go. Now that looks much nicer. So this is obviously too large for us to do on the snap tab. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink it down. You do need to be very careful when you're shrinking fonts. Um, generally it won't let you shrink it more than what the font, if you click this little eye over here, it tells you what the minimum and maximum size are. So in general it won't let you shrink it less than the minimum. I think this looks good so we can rotate it and see if it's going to fit in here. Generally you want about two inches for your tab, so about right here. So this looks good to me. So I'm doing a Command Z to undo that because it's easier to work with it when it's in a uh, horizontal plane. 
So now we're going to do the same thing that we did in another video. I'm going to go up here and go back into create mode by clicking on this icon. I'm going to grab a little um, shape. You can draw it yourself, but the shape's already here. So I'm just going to grab this rectangular vertical. I could have grabbed the horizontal. What was I thinking? I'm going to rotate that. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this over here. Now remember, in order for this trick to work, and remember, you guys haven't watched the video yet. Hello, Kimberly. I'm going to hold down the shift key. If you hold down the shift, when you resize an object, it'll keep it in the same proportion. So like it's going to shrink both sides, the top and the bottom, at the same rate. So I'm going to make it skinny because when we do the trick, um, it's going to make it a little bit larger. So you, each box, when you're in the 4x4 four four hoop, you can see each one is 1 inch. So that kind of gives you an idea. Okay, so we're going to assign some stitches to this. Right now you see it's just got what's called the artwork with no stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and assign some stitches to it. Okay, so right now it's touching and uh, everything looks good. So what we're going to do is the trick is to use Enthusiast to create the pretty shape around here. This is why everybody likes the little names with all the shapes around it. So how we do that is we go up to Utility and we're going to add knockdown stitching. Now obviously we don't want this to cover our design so we come over here and this is the, I have the most up-to-date version so you have to click on the arrow to get to this and when you want to select an object over here in this pane you always need to select on the left side. So now we're going to select this and we're going to convert that. See right now it has the fill. We're going to convert it to a run. And we're going to convert it to um, a bean because our outlines are in bean, right? Let's change the color so that it's easier to see on the screen. I don't think it's easy to see the white when we're trying to work here. Okay, so that's a nice dark color. Okay, great. So now we can get rid of this little guy because we have our tab. Now we might need to shrink that. I generally like my tabs to be a half an inch wide. It's actually not bad. It's 9 16 and like I said, two inches long. So we'll go ahead and fix that when we rotate it. It could be a little bit longer. Um, and the other thing you can do is if you select this, then you can um, go ahead and shrink it again. But for right now, we're not going to do that. So what I want to show you, and let me enlarge this a little bit. This looked really, this was a great trick to make our snap tabs. And it gives us the shape and all of that. But it's not very efficient. And what I have found over time is, and I've learned, every one of these little circles you see here, they're called a node. Each one of those represents a point where the embroidery file is telling your embroidery machine to put a needle down into the um, into this into the project. Always, always, always. So it doesn't matter if it's not time yet. So we have a 2.5 millimeter. Um, so let's do a straight line here, okay? And I'm going to switch over to 2.5. I'm sorry, to millimeters, so you can see. So we can see the millimeters, right? Okay. So there's a straight line. So now let's come over here and switch to millimeters. All right. So here's our stretch line. Let's assign some stitches so we can see that a little better. So right now, if you go to your ruler, you'll see 2.5. Uh, what is this? This is each 10 millimeters, right? Yeah, this is 10. So 2.5 is going to be one quarter of this, so about right here. Yeah, see down here in the bottom left-hand corner, um, it says 2.4 right now. So we're almost there, 2.5. So this is up to that point from the beginning of the line to the where the ruler is, is 2.5 millimeter. So by assigning 2.5 millimeter to the bean stitch, it's telling your embroidery machine to put a needle down at point zero and then move forward 2.5 millimeters in space and put another needle down and that's how it determines that. 
So if we draw this line right here, you see there's no nodes on it. It's a straight line. That is how your embroidery machine is going to do it. It's going to come along every 2.5, needle down, needle down, needle down, needle down, needle down. Okay, so that's great. So you understand that. Now when we come over here, let's get rid of this. When we come over here and look at this design. All along here, there's no nodes. So it's going to use that default default 2.5 millimeter to know when to drop the needle into the project. But if you come along here, you see all these little circles. These are called nodes. A node is a message to the embroidery machine. Hey, I'm changing. There's some object here. I need you to put the needle down into the machine now. So needle down, needle down, needle down. Now, as you can see over here, this obviously is not 2.5 millimeters between those two nodes. That's probably only like 1.1. So it's going to put a needle down here. That's going to go 1.1. It's going to put a needle down. It's going to determine, um, you know, it's constantly looking for that 2.5. But as it's running along the axis here, it comes across to this node before it hits 2.5 millimeters. So it hits the needle down. Here's another one. This space is probably 2.5 millimeters, and this would be even more interesting because it could be hitting this node, coming right here to 2.5 millimeters, putting, dropping the needle down, and oh, wait, here's another node. i got to put the needle down again. So that's a lot of needle downs. Well, for each of that needle down, it's a stitch, right? The machine is coming along and pulling the thread, and it's creating a stitch. What happens is when you get all these nodes in here close together, you get a lot of tiny little stitches. One part of that is they don't look nice. It's not even. The second part of that, and almost more importantly, is when you have that many needle downs coming along on your vinyl, if you're working on vinyl, which most of us are for our stamp tabs, it can perforate the vinyl. This is going to perforate your vinyl, depending on what kind you're using. And even if you're using a lot of cutaway underneath it, it doesn't matter. Your vinyl is, is still, it's a, a man-made material. It's, it's not woven. So when you're putting that needle constantly down in there, you're perforating it. So those are the two big issues with it. It doesn't look good, and it also perforates the vinyl. The third issue, not as important, but also um, a problem with this method is it can gather up the stitches on the back really tight and we already have to resist that drag on our hoop on the bottom of the um, project when we put the vinyl there. So there's already a little bit of inherent drag there. This is going to drag it even more because it's constantly putting all this thread down there and it's almost knotting. So the back of the snap tab doesn't look very nice either. So those are the problems with that method. And I didn't know that when I first started doing stamp tabs. And I started looking at them and looking at them and I'm like, I don't like the way these look. But I didn't quite understand why it was doing that. So I was reading on a message from Brian. He's one of the developers for this um, product line. And he mentioned this whole issue with the nodes and being a needle down. And I was like, Oh, light bulb moment. And then I finally realized I was looking at one. That's why it's doing this. So how do we tell it not to? Well, there's a couple of ways. We can go in here. If you double click on a node, it'll go away. Similarly, if you double click on a, a place, see how it gets that little squiggly line? You can add a node back. But that look at all these nodes. It takes a really, really long time. And it's fine. You can do that. But you might still lose some of your curve. So what I do, it takes an extra minute or two possibly. I still like to let enthusiasts create my shapes for me because then I don't have to think about, think about it at all. Here's all the shapes. But now what I do is I go back in and I draw the outline again. I know it doesn't sound right, right? But And if you don't have enthusiasts, you can just draw the outline yourself and just try and visualize it but not everybody can do that so I go in here and I go and I pick draw with points and I will start um, here um, I always like to put my um, I'm actually gonna put the note here I always like to start my um, 
tab in the beginning. So like um, if we come back over here and look at this, you see this is the other problem with the enthusiast. So the fourth issue is you don't have any control over the starts and stops. So wherever these little bow ties are, the green bow tie is where the needle is going to start stitching. The red bow tie is where it's going to end. I do not like my starts and stops within the body of my snap tab. I like to bury it up here in the tab so that when I fold it over, it um, is concealed within the snap tab. I can't always do that. Sometimes I do still end up having it down here, but I try. So what I do is I go ahead and honestly, I don't even um, draw the rectangle anymore. I just do the outline on the name and then I just draw that rectangle in manually. But I wanted to keep it consistent. So what I'm going to go here is draw with points. I'm going to change this up here so it's straight. I'm going to start with a straight line. I'm going to come down here straight. And then I'm going to switch this over to the drawing with curves. And I'm going to pick the minimal number of curves that I need. And we're going to convert these into cusps. So everywhere there's a dip, I definitely want one there. And then I want one here. And sometimes you can get rid of some of these. So wherever you want to curve. And everywhere there's a dip. All right. And I'm going to smooth out some of this as I go along. Because I don't need it to be as much curvy as it made it. All right. And then we're going to switch back over to a straight line and finish this off. And right click. All right, there we go. It looks really messy right now, right? That's okay. We're going to fix it. So now let me change this color so we can tell the difference between the two colors we're working with here. So let's make this green. So our background, our original that we did with the underlay is up here, the dark one. So what we want to do is go ahead and clean this up and make sure our green matches that. So I'm going to straighten up this line here. So right now we have a whole bunch of curves. In order, you see how we have these handles here? As it is right now, these handles, um, see how when we pull this handle down, it affects this radius of this node. We don't want that. We want to be able to have this node have its own control. So the door, in order to do that, you need to right click on the node. So you select it, that node, right click and change it to a cusp. Now, once you do this, you see how we can control it. It doesn't, this node, this handle doesn't control this arch. So go ahead and just curve these up to match the line we just already had from our knockdown stitch. And you don't have to have it straight on there. Just make it as neat as you can. So convert all of these to a cusp. You can go around and do it all at once, or you can just do it as you're going along. And smooth it out. And we might be able to get rid of this line, but let's try it. Because what, what is our goal? Remember, our goal is to minimize the number of needle downs we're doing. We want to allow the program to evenly space out our bean stitch based on the properties we set of 2.5 millimeters or 3.5 millimeters. I've actually started liking my bean stitches at 3.5 millimeters I think it looks a little bit neater um, and you don't need it to be 2.55 it doesn't for construction it's not needed 3.55 is plenty and it just spreads it out and makes it look a little bit neater unless of course you have a thousand nodes if you have a thousand nodes it's not going to look very neat at 3.55 okay we're almost done see this doesn't take too long you guys can time it when we're all done here and look at my video and see how long it took um, and then I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, we might be able to get rid of a couple of these nodes. All right. I think this one I can get rid Let's see. I'm going to get rid of this one. I think I can get rid of this one. And make this cusp. Okay, draw that handle up. Draw this handle up. You see how this handle goes? This one goes to this node. This one goes to that node. There, I just reduced it by one drop. 
I'm gonna let's see. I don't, don't know if I need this to curve in here as much as it is, but let's see. People um generally really like the curviness. I'm lazy. I don't like to do all that intricate cutting, so I usually smooth out my curve a little bit more than this. But in the interest of the video, we'll leave it in there. Again, I think we can get rid of this node because we can just make sure this is a cusp and this is a cusp, and we can pull these handles up here. And usually you can get really smooth lines this way, much easier than having all those nodes in there. All right, and we already had this as a cusp, so now we need to get rid of this one. Now this one, we might need that because, nope, we don't. See, I got rid of that one too. All right, so I smoothed out this one over here. Um, actually, we can get rid of that node. All right, and just smooth that out like that. And I think that's good. So if we want to keep this draping here, we do need those nodes to point that in there. All right, so now let me hide this. This is our original one. And now look at this one. Let's assign some stitches to it that might help you see it better. And 2.55. Now look how much that looks very nice and clean. You still got the outline, but look at the difference in the nodes. Let's unhide this one again. Look at all those nodes. I don't know if there's any way to track it, but it says 425 stitches this way. Let's see how many stitches does this one say. 413. So we've saved 14 stitches as well as gotten rid of all those nodes. So this is going to give you a much cleaner stitch out. And in general, except maybe right here, this is really tight. You're probably going to have a nice... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Sorry, uh, a version of 2.5 millimeter, or in this case, let's change it to 3.5 millimeter. I want 3.5 millimeter. So, and then I have my start and my stop up here. So we can go ahead and delete this underlay now because we don't want all those nodes. And we're going to create, we're going to copy. I do a Command C and a Command V. And let's convert this one here to our die placement line. I always do mine in the same colors. I do my placement in Bermuda pink across all of my projects. Um, it's just one of my things. If you ever see my files, you'll know that. We don't need to tie off our placement here, but we do want to tie off our ending. So we go to the bow tie to tie it off. Just to be safe, I generally try to overlap, but sometimes that doesn't work. And or I forget. And I always make the final bean black. All right. So now we have our, our two steps. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a command A and select all of this. And now I'm going to rotate it to fit in my hoop. Because, oh wait, before I do that, hold on, hold on, hold on. My um, tab is not straight, and that drives me crazy when it's not, so let me fix that first. Um, okay, it's straight now, but I'm going to go ahead and make this straight. And I should have done that before I copied the placement line. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to rotate it. And make sure it fits in the frame. So you just kind of pull it around and make sure it fits. Oh, my battery's getting low. Let me make sure I plug this back in. Don't want our video to end. Okay, so I'm going to rotate it just a little bit more. And drag it down here. All right. So I prefer um, to have my tabs be curved at the top. So again, I should have done this before I copied this. So it would have been easier. So what I do is I go to, I, I don't know which way it's ever going to go. Yep, I did the wrong way. So that went this way. There's a way to know it, but I don't remember. So I just select whichever one it is. Oh, sometimes it does that to me. I have to unselect and reselect. So we're going to go here and we're going to hit curved. Oh, sorry. 
that's not the one we want because I didn't have the tie the connection it pulled that one out so I just pulled it out of the way for right now this is what we want to be curved okay now see how it did that little curve right there so make sure that's even and I like to have that nice little curve at the top instead of having it straight when it's really straight what happens is that the um, tab underneath can like punch bunch up on stuff and break I want to stretch this out a little bit so if you go ahead and go like this and select both of those nodes you can pull this up so you get the maximum amount you can fit in your hoop and it'll keep your arch there so and then if we go ahead and draw this back up here that'll connect it so now I'm gonna just go ahead and delete this one and redo it so I don't have to fuss around with trying to make sure so control C then control V and then change this if you manually do it then you have to make sure it lines up exactly correct and it doesn't always so that's okay all right mute it pink change this run to a single and 3.55 and we don't need to worry about tying it off okay so we have our stamp tab almost done so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do the sim simulator and I want to make sure that this doesn't overrun the outlines don't run twice and it did did you see that let me slow it down so you can see that it did run so it's going to go around because of the way that we have the start and stop it's coming around it's going to circle around and there's like no it's hard to get this to be medium it's either really slow or really fast there it goes okay now see it's going back around again we have a little gap here so how we can fix that go ahead and select this and then hit this close now it still may run around again but let's try it so that created it and turned it into one object and now it's not going to restart again and then what I like to do on the final bean is I actually like to play it was starting this way right I like to play around with this end so that it over um, it over stitches back stitches so now if we let's go forward to the black you'll see what I mean so now it's going to come around and now it's doing a single and then it's going to go into the bean I don't want it to do that so I took it the wrong way and sometimes I do I can never should it started that way so I'm going to pull it just a little bit past the green this way now let's see I have to play with it I'm sure there's a, a logical way to know in the software when it's doing it but I have to play with it <laughs> But you can tell by the way the simulator is moving that it's doing the bean now. It's not as fast. So when it gets up to here, the node, the red star stop node was like right here, but my bow tie was right here. So it should come here and then back up again. There we go. And it's hard to capture that in the simulator. But let's look at it again. So we have the red node, which is telling it, this is stop. We're going to stop stitching here. I'm done with this file, but when you move the, the bow tie, that tells it to end the actual stitching there. So I don't know any easier way to explain that. Okay, so now we have to do one more thing because this is a new version of Inbrilliance. Um, they've changed it a little bit. So you see if you look over here, our letters in our underlay are different um, objects and we need them to be one object so we can save this and stitch it. Oh and one other thing I forgot to do you see I have my name stamp tab v2 up here I'm gonna save first of all I always save frequently but I'm actually gonna save this again when I get it to this spot where I have it almost done but I haven't played with the stitches yet I'm going to save the file again as my working file 
and this is going to, I'm going to make a copy basically of it at this point. So if I screw up, I know I can at least come back to this. So I've got it saved, but I have the original one, right? So we saved that. Now we saved it as a working because in order to be able to merge these together, um, you don't have to, you could position this object to go in between here and it'll stitch out. But especially if you're going to make these to sell, it looks cleaner if you merge it all together. So what I do is I go here and you have to be in edit mode. So if you click the create button, it'll take you into that edit mode. And then it's how you know you have these little um, green squares. Now right click and convert to stitches. Now you can go ahead and um, modify whatever you need to do with the file and so forth. And uh, let me double check. I think when you do the BX fonts, they automatically put the tie offs in it as that's up to the BX. Oh, what's going on? Oh, there we go. Um, it's like my memory is not doing well here. Let's go and undo. I just want to double check that because I think the BX should have handled the. Are we in edit mode now? Yeah. Stitch. Okay. Um. If you want to try and adjust the density of the stitching, the satin stitching, this is where you have to do it. You have to do it before you convert it to stitches. So if you come over here, you'll see how you can reduce the satin stitching. I have found success up to 25% um, to reduce that because when this is really small, it can be very heavy into the vinyl. So you can play around with that and see. Um, that was the one thing I forgot to show you. Um, but I always test it again and then we can go ahead and we didn't look at this I like to watch the letters stitch out too so let's go ahead and do that make sure the stitch simulator looks okay on our letters and different digitizers have different amount of underlays with their stitching All right, so now we're going to go, oops, I got out of there. Go back into edit mode, and now let's convert it to stitches again. All right, then go back into create mode. Now highlight both of these and go up to create, design, combine. Now it's all one design. If you want to, you can um, change this placement bean, and we want our bean to be last. So go ahead and click that and set move last. And let's name this something. Whatever this name is is what it, the name is going to be. Stitch design Alicia stamp tab four by four. This is my convention. SFD for Starfish Design. The name of the file, it's a snap tab, so I do ST and then the 4x4. Four four. So if you are going to sell the snap tab on whatever site you are, you can now go up to Create, Publish, Batch Export Stitch Files. You need Stitch Artist 3 for this, though. It's going to go ahead and default to, I don't know why it chooses what um, versions it defaults to, but... I go ahead and release all mine um, based on um, the default and then I also add manually it doesn't do VIP some people like VIP so I have to go in and manually select VIP so it takes a minute for it to work the engine um, and it's your files will show up here let's give it a minute See, and then you can select one so it fills in the name up here. If you don't, it's going to default to the file name of the actual BE file, which may not always be what you want your stamp tab to be named. 
and oops, I hit the wrong one. I meant VIP, sorry. And that's the format, the ones I save. And that's it. So now you're ready to go ahead and zip up that package and um, sell it if that's what you're doing. Now make sure you have permission <coughs> if you're going to resell any any stamp tabs or anything like that. If you're using a published font, you need to make sure you have permission from the font provider, the font designer, to resell. Most of them don't let you. There's one that I know that does allow. Um, I don't remember whose font this is, so I don't know if I can or not. Um, but I don't sell these anyway. Um, and the ones that are built into the application you can use. So another question I had asked in the comments on the old file was, how do you do the print? Now, I do not think that this print is anywhere near as good as it could be. Um, I've seen what So It Pro does. So It Pro is so much more professional. It creates almost a PDF and you can plug in different information on it. And Stitch Artist doesn't. It's it's just not good. So this is what I do. I go to media and quality. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Is it, yeah, media and quality. I change layout to pages per sheet. I changed it to, and then it will go ahead and print both pages in one PDF. I come over here and I click. Um, for me, I open it in preview, or you can do save as PDF. My preview basically is PDF. So when I open it in preview, and a lot of you people use it in Brilliance on Mac. You can go up here to Tools, Annotate, Text, and you can put in a text box anywhere on this page, and then you can put your little how-to. So if you don't want to have a major Word document, you can go ahead and um, plug it away in here. You can add another text box up here with your links to your pages, and then you go up to File, export as PDF and there's your PDF with your color mapping um, so that's that's how I do it I don't know um, there's maybe other ways to do it but again they really could make this much better they give you this option to publish um, fonts now and your designs yet the template that the print template sucks um, but I'm a Mac user. This is what I have. I have all my money invested in this. Um, and it's like almost $1,000 to get Essentials, Enthusiast, and all the way up to Stitch Artist 3. So it's not cheap. Um, but it is a good way to, you know, get started. Um, you can do this with Stitch Artist 1 and Enthusiast. So you can get away with Essentials, Stitch Artist 1, and Enthusiast if you just want to create the Snap tab. You need Stitch Artist 3 to publish. Um, but yeah, so. Um, and the publish is just doing that batch export. You could individually save off these in the format you need with only Stitch Artist 1. So you could, in theory, sell these stamp tabs with Stitch Artist 1, Enthusiast, and Essentials to do it the way I just showed you. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful to you um, and makes nicer cleaner stitch um, stamp tabs for you go ahead and test it both ways use the old method that I showed you in the beginning just use an enthusiast and then do clean up the nodes like I showed you retrace it with less nodes and stitch them out and see how the difference is to you and see if it's worth it to you it is to me it took what one or two minutes extra to um, go in and clean up those nodes and I'm gonna have a nicer stitch out Thanks a bunch. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I am working on going to start doing some more essentials and brilliance kind of things um, because I've had my members asking me stuff. And hopefully I'll get some more videos out there. It is May 1st, 2000, or I'm sorry, 2020, 2020. We are all fighting this battle together. Stay safe. And I hope you all have a good weekend. Bye-bye.